and in three more years after that you get your entire equity back so that's the model that we recommend and i think that definitely works and if a co-founder decides to stick around for four years i think they deserve whatever equity they actually end up getting in the company the second thing in terms of ip and what we do to protect um, co-founders of startups is always 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 insist on having an assignment of ip rights not enough to just have an assignment of ip rights in the employment agreement or your appointment letters or your consulting agreements it's also important to have specific ip assignments of specific ip that you actually file there's a lot of pride of authorship when you invent something so inventors typically say i want to see my name on the patent application right so uh, you'll be amazed as to how many fights co-founders have as to whose name has to go first on the on the patent application so these things happen but what we say is yeah i mean you're always going to be the inventor of this uh, amazing invention but if you don't assign this invention over and one of the developers one of the co-inventors leaves two three six months from now or a year from now uh, then what happens there's absolutely no way for you to recover that ip back from them other than through licensing uh, if you don't have an ip assignment i mean if you have an ip assignment in the employment agreement i guess there is some recourse but um, to have a specific ip assignment with the title of the patent application makes a lot more sense so these are a few things that we do to help them mitigate some of this uh, exit uh, wounds mm -hmm. that most of the startups typically face okay. thank you so that that's uh, that's very enlightening and that's something uh, it's very important to take care of but this assignment thing brings up uh, one of the last issues i want to address is uh, inventorship because very often people coming out of fraternities like everybody wants to be an inventor but uh, you have to have the correct inventorship for your patent to survive scrutiny and uh, maybe I'll ask Rajiv first uh, you know the IIT community is famous for its very close-knit fraternity they're always friends forever and <laughs> having the alumni meets everywhere in the world so do you see any difference in startups that have been coming out of people who went to school together versus uh, you know somebody coming in with a business angle and somebody with a technical angle which is very often the startup picture in in the US uh, that two guys being complementary but not overlapping skills versus the startup is being brought up by people with overlapping skills and is there more or less uh, problems or risks down the road I think very important question uh, with respect to startup I think structuring is very important especially at the inception stage when you talk about the early strategy and uh, most of the now tech graduates who are coming has got some understanding of the financial implications or they do take help of uh, or, or even even lot of informations that help them to decide that structuring uh, most of of the startups that I have worked with I think they are well structured uh, and even with respect to uh, not only the equity uh, div divesting they, they have complete uh, knowledge about that, about that. Uh, yeah the IP part is slightly tricky for them because that requires a specialized knowledge and uh, there is there, there is a bigger risk in that so with respect to like as Krishna has mentioned that uh, most of the inventions are filed in the name of individual inventors out there so they file it in their own name uh, the only recommendation is that they should file in the name of the company and with Indian ecosystem we have got a startup uh, incentive given by the uh, government where you qualify under the DIPP rules that as, as a startup you can always uh, file as, as a startup entity by using form 28 and also go for expedited examination with the help of form 18A. So structuring is very important and I think Indian startups uh, are slowly and steadily uh, maturing to that stage. Uh, most of them have structured their whole organization at the time of inception. But as an IP professional, I think we should guide them on the IP side, uh, especially with structuring of the IP components of, of your assets. 
Thank you. I think uh, that's, that's very I, I would like to mention a couple of books that came out, oh, about 18, 17, 18 years ago, that every startup uh, and maybe attorneys dealing with startups should read. One is Edison in the Boardroom, and the other is Rembrandt's in the Attic. Rembrandt's in the Attic is what you have kind of said, that like, uh, there are several companies on the verge of bankruptcy, like uh, Xerox and I think uh, uh, the Texas computers, I think Texas computers were, had the bankruptcy papers in hand when the last thing the CEO did was ask somebody to see what kind of IP they had and then he was so impressed, he tore up the bankruptcy papers and said there, there's a lot in this company. The real value of the company can get hidden and to avoid that, the management, and as the startup keeps growing, the, the front line, which is the marketing, the sales, the management, and uh, which is Edison in the boardroom, and the board, the essentially the people talking to investors, talking to shareholders, etc., get isolated from the people in the back office coming up with the technology. And if there isn't a cross space, what a uh, marketing person promises uh, may not be able to be deliverable by the company or something fantastic, the back office, the science, the technology centers developed uh, will never see the light of day because it didn't get promoted by the front office. Uh, so to finish this off, I just uh, asked Yohei to give some comments. He told us how the Japanese uh, system works to start with. And now after listening to all this stuff, is there any lessons that India could learn from uh, from Japan and, uh, and any other experience that you may have? Uh, other experience is uh, so, so supporting for the overseas protection for the startups, so as I uh, mentioned a little bit. So I think uh, maybe so nowadays, so startups, uh, as uh, Krishna said, so IT software industry is there are many startups in this section, so the technology is easy to diffuse uh, all over the world. So then uh, it's very important to protect the technology with all over the world. So then uh, why don't you, uh, Indian government, take uh, some measure to support, to protect not only in India, but also um, USA or EP, to protect their invention uh, all over the world. So we found uh, such kind of uh, application fee and uh, uh, half of them or some uh, experts dispatched to consult with how do they take an uh, application strategy so just only apply for the US or uh, not only uh, the, so how about uh, ASEAN countries and so on they can consult with how do they take a strategy to fire uh, foreign countries. So this kind of uh, full support may be a good idea to take uh, in. Well, thank you very much. So uh, I think I'll